Hi, in this video, we are going to discuss about object identity. In our earlier video, we discussed about how an object is getting referred. Now, when it comes to an identity of an object, in Python, every individual object will carry its unique identity. It has its own identity number assigned for every single object. Please be noted that variables are called as symbolic name just pointing to that object which carries a unique identity. So variable name by itself is not an object or is not an identity of an object. It just plays uh, as a symbolic name reference to that particular object. Now Python ensures that it gives you a guaranteed uh, definition saying that no two objects will have the same identifier in it. It is guaranteed in such a way that in the lifetime of an object, the, the particular object will never overlap with another object's identity. Please be noted, I'm stressing here, it's all about objects but not about the variables. There is a built-in function called id in Python which will help you to track the uh, identity of a particular object wherein this id is going to return an object's integer identifier. The identifier will be uh, of type integer in it and you can track that. Now with this id function you can also ensure that two variables can point to the same object also. Okay. So what I mean by this is you can have two variables, I'm not talking about two objects, a single object that can be pointed by two variables. But that doesn't mean two objects pointing to the same identity. Okay, the notable point here is two variable name can point to the same object and that can be uh, tracked with the help of this id function as well. So how we uh, come to the understanding of that, we will see in the demonstration part. So, the first thing is we have to declare a variable in order to uh, identify the identity of that particular uh, object which is referred by the symbolic name. So, the name is going to be age and I'm going to declare an age as 25. I'm going to have another variable called name these are variable names okay and I'm going to assign a name for it let's say uh, Steve Jobs then I'm going to have the uh, a boolean type of variable which is going to car carry a value of true now if you notice here there are three different variables being uh, uh, declared and a value got uh, initialized to it now we need to identify the object's identity. Please be noted that there are three variables. So I have an object representation here and the object representation is going to be uh, appearing like this. So I have an object called uh, integer object. This is an integer object and I have another object called string object. And I have another object called boolean object. Right? So these are the three objects. I guess in our earlier video we discussed about this. The interpreter is going to create an object of that particular type. Right? So it's an integer object and the symbolic name that we have here is age which is pointing to this particular object reference. Then you have a variable called name pointing to this. And you have a variable called truthy pointing to this. So if you look at each object, each object has a different reference, okay, a different memory allocation. That itself concludes that these objects are going to carry a unique identity of, of it. So how do we experience that? Let's go ahead and uh, call the function called id function, which we have seen on the slide just now print of id of a variable called age. So now I'm trying to track the uh, id of the first integer object and I'm going to print the id of the string object which is referred 
by the symbolic name called name and then I'm going to have another ID call for invoking the uh, identity of the boolean object through the symbolic name called truthy. When we execute them, you can notice that there are three different numerical number being uh, printed. So the first uh, identity number is going to be referred to your uh, integer object, right? So here it is mapped to the integer object. The second numerical number is going to be mapped to your name object that is your string and the third numerical sequence of numbers is going to be mapped to your boolean object. But what need to be observed here is all the numbers are unique from the other one. So it's a conclusion that all these objects are carrying its own unique ID. It's an integer, it's a string, it's a boolean, so it carries its own unique ID. Nevertheless, at any point, the objects will overlap with another object's identity. That's practically not possible in Python because Python gives you a guaranteed uh, statement that every individual object will carry only its unique ID and that never gets overlapped with another object of it. Now, having this said, I guess now we are able to understand the basics of uh, the identity capture using the function called uh, id function. But there are certain tricky things that we have to work around here when it comes to variable access because we are accessing through the uh, uh, symbolic name, right? So let's take another example. I'm going to declare uh, a variable called name equals and I'm going to define it as Steve. I'm going to have another variable called uh, uh, first name equals let's say Steve. Now what happens is I have two variables please be noted I have two variable names a symbolic name pointing to a value of Steve okay now, if you look at this expressions, we have two objects and one, the object is going to be referred via the symbolic name called name. Another object is going to be referred through uh, a symbolic name called first name. So, from our previous learning, we can understand that there are two objects in existence and two objects are going to carry the value called Steve. Please be noted, the names are same. The first one is all about the name. The second one is all about the first name. But their value are represented as a string uh, carrying the same value in it. So, from my earlier explanation, we come to the derivation that there are two objects referred with the symbolic name of a name and a first name carrying a value similar as Steve itself. But the outcome of the ID of these objects have to be noted. Are they going to have a unique ID representation is what we are going to explore right now and I'm going to give you a brief understanding about that uh, output as well. So let's go ahead and print the ID of a name and I'm going to print the ID of the first name. When we execute this, you should notice that the return of that particular ID uh, identity numbers are exactly the same. So what does it mean? It means that these ID are not uh, uh, unique, right? They are same. So does it mean that there are two objects in the existence? No. So this this concept of explanation is absolutely wrong when it comes to the expression like this. Why? Just now I stated that every individual object will carry uh, a unique identity. In that case, I have two variables. Means it should be of a two object carrying the same name. 
and so it should come up with a two different unique identity but that's not the case how the python works if you notice here indeed there are two objects okay it seems to be a two object but actually how the python is going to work is i have only single object okay and the single object is going to be pointed by two uh two symbolic names okay two symbolic names and the names are one is your name itself another one is your first name now what happens here is why is that so there is only a single object it's because the names are same i'm sorry the values are same so we are going to have the value called steve here so it means that when you have the similar string in the python runtime memory for two different variables it is not going to be considered as a two different object rather a single object which will store the same value but you can access that same value through any symbolic name that you referred with but there is no need to create multiple objects when it is going to share the same value by this way python is trying to improvise the performance of your application the memory consumption can be a uh, little fine tuned whenever there is a repetition of a string values are seen with multiple naming standards it is not going to consider them as a separate object rather it's going to store them into the common memory where the value will be stored it's called as a common memory location where the value called st will be stored but that object memory will be referred by two symbolic names one is your name itself another one is your first name but practically speaking these two are not actually the reference of a two different object but that but then it's a single object that's the reason when you prompt for the id of a name or when you prompt for the id of a first name the response is the same id itself but this is not going to correlate with the definition which i have already said what is the statement that we have defined with every single object will carry a unique id okay so that statement says intact but when you look out the expression like these python will streamline its performance and ensure that unnecessarily creating a multiple object is not required at this point of time because the value stays the same so you can reuse the value in the same memory itself or from the same memory itself by just capturing that var variable location or the object location through a symbolic name called name and first name we still have to understand with multiple other examples which i'll be coming up in the next video thank you